Hi everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Your Free Consult. Today's a really interesting one. We're going to talk about HPV, human papilloma virus, and its vaccination, so stay tuned in. So I know if you follow me on Instagram or on Facebook, I'm always telling you to come in for HPV vaccination. But then the other day I was just thinking to myself that I actually need to tell you what HPV is, what it's about, um, you know, every detail about it, why you should get the vaccine and just all the details that you need to know about HPV so that you're coming in for the vaccine very informed. So let's quickly get into it. What exactly is HPV? HPV is human papilloma virus. It is a sexually transmitted virus that causes cervical cancer, but it can also cause other cancers like esophageal cancer, oropharyngeal cancer, anal cancer even. Um, and so it's not just cervical cancer, but yes, it mostly causes cervical cancer, especially in women. Now I need to mention that HPV has over 200 subtypes and out of these 200 subtypes about 14 of them are high risk subtypes which means that those are the subtypes that are more likely to give you cervical cancer and I'm going to get into that a little bit later. How does one get HPV? HPV is gotten by skin to skin contact mostly through sexual intercourse and so for all my patients who've been asking if they can get it from a toilet seat or from any other kind of situation it's very unlikely it's mostly skin to skin genital contact mostly during sexual intercourse and remember this is a virus so how does one prevent getting um, HPV? Well, condom use is one really good way to prevent HPV infection. It prevents it to a large extent. But remember, you still can get HPV from skin to skin contact during sexual intercourse. And so as much as you can use condoms and they are really effective, there is still a chance that you can get HPV even despite condom use. So how does then this human papilloma virus cause cervical cancer? Once the skin to skin contact and the HPV comes into contact with the skin and then the vagina and then the cervix, it buries itself into the different layers of the cervix and there's about five of those. And then it goes to the most bottom layer of the cervix and it stays latent in the body for about five to 10 years. So from the time of HPV infection to the time you actually get an abnormal pap smear can be anything between five and 10 years depending depending on how aggressive the cervical cancer is going to be. So it stays in the bottom layers of the cervix and then it starts to make its way back up to the surface of the cervix, which is where, as an OBGYN, I'm going to sample it during a pap smear and then I'll be able to tell that the cells are abnormal. So the HPV stays in the bottom, makes its way back to the top and as it's making its way back to the top it makes the cervical cells abnormal and so as it's moving upwards it starts causing what we call precancerous lesions to the point that when we do the pap smear we realize that the cells of the cervix are actually abnormal and then we quantify the extent of the abnormalities now i hope you've all been watching my channel and i hope you watched my previous episodes because we do have an episode on the different types of pap smear results that you can get and these are the different abnormalities that HPV can cause on your cervix. So if you haven't watched it, please go back and watch it. And then once the cervical cells become abnormal, that is what we sample during the pap smear. And at the same time, the HPV virus starts being shed off from the cervix. And that's the time when a woman can actually infect another person with HPV as well. So this is the time when we will do tests either pap smear or a HPV DNA test. And I want to quickly get into that because that is the diagnosis for HPV. So you can do a pap smear which will tell us about whether or not the cells of the cervix are normal or whether they are starting to show signs of cancer of the cervix means that they're getting precancerous lesions. So we take the smear with a brush and we look at it in a micro, under a microscope to be able to tell are these cells actually normal or are they starting to get precancerous abnormalities and from there we're able to tell you how abnormal your pap smear is and what needs to be done remember this is really different from actually doing a hpv dna test where during the dna test we tell you do you have hpv or not and if you do have hpv which subtype of hpv do you have do you have the non-high risk subtypes or do you have the high risk subtypes which are very likely to give you cervical cancer. So remember there's a big difference between a pap smear and a HPV DNA test. 
Now, other than giving you cervical cancer, one of the other things that HPV can cause is anogenital warts. So when you get a genital, a vulval, a vaginal or an anal wart, that is actually HPV virus. You can get it on your skin or you can get it on the cervix. And remember, even the skin ones are sexually transmitted. Um, they're highly infectious and you can't transmit them from partner to partner during sexual intercourse. Now I want us to quickly talk about the vaccine because there's no need to talk about HPV if we're not going to ask how do we prevent it. Remember we talked about condom use but there's also vaccination. Remember we said that HPV has over 200 subtypes and about 14 of them are high risk. We have three kinds of vaccines that are able to prevent HPV and so that's the, that's the main aim of the HPV vaccine to prevent HPV. We have one that protects against two out of the 14 high risk subtypes. We have another that protects against six out of the 14 high-risk subtypes and another that protects against nine out of the 14 high-risk subtypes. So the one that protects against two is called Severix. The one that protects against six and nine is called Gardasil six and nine. And so, of course, one gives you a little less protection and one gives you a bit more. But I do have to mention that the one that protects you against two out of the 14 high-risk subtypes protects you against the most notorious subtypes, the ones that are most likely to cause cervical cancer, and that's subtype 16 and 18. So it's a very efficacious vaccine, very much worth having because those are the most notorious subtypes. Of course, if you can afford it because cost is the issue, it would be better to get the one that protects you against 9 out of the 14 high-risk subtypes. It gives a better protection, but it costs a lot, a lot more. If you can access it in a country where the vaccines are free and you don't have to pay in cash for them, the better for you you can get the ones that have the higher coverage. All right, so let's quickly talk about who gets the vaccine and who doesn't. Ideally, um, anyone between the ages of 9 and 45, any woman between the age of 9 and 45 can get the vaccine. Preteen boys can get it up to the age of 15, so between 9 and 14, and that's really helpful and that's a lot of things that many, and that's a thing that many people don't know, that boys can actually be vaccinated against HPV so that they do not become carriers and then transmit it to girls. So that's a really good step if you have a little boy and you need um, to have him vaccinated, it would be a really good thing to do that. So I need to mention that under the age of 26, the vaccine has the highest efficacy. And then after the age of 26, the efficacy starts to drop. And that gets even lower with the more number of sexual partners, with the chances of previously having an abnormal pap smear, with the chances of previously having been diagnosed with HPV, the efficacy still starts to drop. Now, even for those who are over 26, have had several sexual partners, have had an abnormal pap smear, have had HPV before, the vaccine is still about 65 uh, to 75% effective, so it's always a good vaccine to have. Um, but again, under the age of 26, especially for those who have previously not had any sexual intercourse, the efficacy can go up to 99%. So always, always a good vaccine to have. Now the question that I get a lot is, can I have the vaccine if I've previously had sexual intercourse? Yes, you can, especially if you're under the age of 26, but even over the age of 26, um, I've elaborated on how efficacious the vaccine is. It's always, always a, a good idea to be vaccinated against HPV. It's one of the most common STIs, um, especially in the States. We don't have studies for Africa, but um, it is one of the most common STIs around. So I hope I've made HPV and its vaccination much clearer to you. I I hope you're more convinced the vaccine is very safe, has very little side effects, if any at all, and it's always a good idea. And the younger you are, the better. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Your Free Consult, and see you next week.